Hi guys, it's Scotty S3 Model Works. I'm just getting set to uh, to go here. Um, I promised myself, and I also made a promise to you guys in the back of my head, that the next time I did a full airbrush strip, I'd film it. So here we go. Um, just cleaning my magnifier real quick before I get started. I'm using an Iwata BCS. Okay, for the demo. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here for us. See if I can get all this in camera. What I'd really like to focus on tonight is the air valve. And right back here, as you guys can see, I pulled this out off camera because it was being a little bit stubborn. But this here is the packing gland nut. These are two very particular areas of uh, siphon feed airbrushes that I concentrate on. Um, there's a lot, there's a fair bit of buildup in that uh, packing nut. So I'm going to show you guys that here in just a second, as close as we can get. <clears throat> and it's probably not going to be all that close. But we're going to try. But my needle nut, as you guys can see, has a little white PTFE packing washer in it. You can see a lot of the black grime that's in there. You can actually see it from both sides. There was an awful lot more in here, but this is actually some colored paint and some leftover and leave-ins from what I was painting last night, and I thought I had it pretty good to go. But, anyway, let me put that in soak real quick for us. <clears throat> soak and quite literally just going to let it sit there. I'm also going to do a little bit of work on my uh, 0.5, excuse me, my 0.5 tip, which is, yeah, okay. So anyway, we're going to put those into soak and as you guys can see right back here, this is all the schmutz that came out of that packing belt just when I pulled the needle out. And that is what it is. The rest of the brush I have over here off camera, it's already taken apart. So let's go ahead and focus on this air valve. And I think some of you guys, if you've never had it down this far, you'll be surprised that there is a bit more in there than you probably think there is. So anyway, this is just my quick adapter. Screws right off. I don't even keep any Teflon tape on it. I don't know if you guys can notice that in there or not, but there is a... I don't know how to describe that. It's an internal nut, but it's got a slot in there. It's a threaded portion with a piston, plunger, and spring. And I'll show you as they come out. But basically, I just get my handy tweezers here. You want to make sure you keep track of how these come out in order, because it only works one way. So, here is my nut. God dang it, Scott. As you can see, it's a strange looking nut. Okay, these are the passageways that I use for the screwdriver to hold it right here to thread it back in. So, that goes on. It fits both ways on the plunger. This is, I'm pulling this out upside down because this is how I'm going to reload it. There's the spring. Okay, very fine spring that goes in there on that plunger. Mm, try to keep it all on camera for you guys. And I'm not doing a great job. So anyway, there's the retaining screw, the spring, and this is the plunger. With another, this is not the PTFE version, but it doesn't need to be. Anyway, that points down. So now that we have all that apart, we're going to focus on just this bad boy. And I'm going to slide all this other crap out of the way so I don't get it all mucky. Mm. All right. And... I'm going to do a bit of a glove up just because I'm going to get into the lacquer thinner real quick here. 
So usually what I'll do is just get an old, somewhat stiff brush and I'll just flood a bunch in there. I flood it through the paint passage, I flood it all the way down the collar in the uh, air valve and I'm doing that for a particular reason because that the, there's another brass collar in there that I'm not sure if you guys can pick out in there with enough wiggling and enough manipulation that's going to slide right out of there and you guys will see that's, that's also a good, pretty good build up area for uh, stuff schmutz whatever you want to call it now I dump a bunch down here because that packing valve fits very succinctly with the Teflon side, which is this side, down here in the paint passage. And it fits just before that paint pickup tube right down here, but it screws in inside the airbrush. So I'm just going to let that continue soaking off camera here a little bit. And we're going to work on this. As you guys can see, there's a fair bit of shit in there as it all comes rushing out the top there. I don't do this except maybe maybe every couple of months. I think the last time I did it was after I did all my uh, marbling on my A6 which I finished just before the end of last year and um, that's the last time I did it. So we're just going to give this a good soak too. and Hopefully I did a little bit of good work <clears throat> on that brass collar in there and I'm going to see if I can get that to slip out for us on camera. Usually, as you can see, that's a very snug fit with just a Q-tip in there. So it's usually just a matter, and I think I can already hear it and feel it, and yes, if you notice, there it comes. A little brass sleeve in there. Now, if you'll notice, that also has a pickup hole in it for the air valve and yet another washer. And look at all that crap and crud on there. So now that I have it douched this way, I'm going to douche it through the air nozzle and hopefully get a lot of that crap out of there. And as you can see already, this was a fresh bottle of lacquer thinner. So I had some white, I had some grays in there. I'm not sure why those particular pigments chose to stick over everything that I've sprayed out of this thing in the last couple of months, but that's what it chooses to retain. But these are the things that serve to make sticky trigger, in my opinion. And I'm also going to show you guys another trick here. I'm already at 8 minutes, so I would like to keep this to about 20. I'm not sure if I can. I've already cleaned the other pieces of the airbrush, so we're not going to deal with that. I really just wanted to show you guys these parts, and I'm going to get in here with that packing gland and uh, the needle and the tip here in just another minute. So we'll give this some good time to dry out here. And we'll let all those continue to soak for just a moment. Eek. I got a ton of crap in there. Now, that Q-tip is all the way in there, and it is backed up all the way to the edge of this paint passage right here. Okay, You're going to see all the crap that comes out of here. I'm not going to get it all on one pass. I guarantee it. It never happens. However, what I am going to try, just want to pick up some extra in there, so I'm going to flood it out a little bit with with some more lacquer thinner on there and see if we can get that. So, I'll be real surprised if a lot of crap doesn't come out of here, guys. I really will. <clears throat> you do kind of have to douche it around in there because that passageway is bigger than just the, uh, the needle packing valve there. Okay. All of that badness came out of there. That's one pass. And that is without the needle packing valve in there. Okay, so here we go back in for pass number two. You 
You guys can see what I'm getting at. Just because you look at your airbrush and you think it's clean, I used to think that a lot too, until I really figured out how to take mine apart and maintain it. So that's pass number two. So that's one. And I squished a bunch of it out, and that's two. So it's just like cleaning a gun. I'm going to keep working it. Until I get those passages clean. And I'm just letting a lot of that come out of the paint passage down there. And if I need to, I just pick it pick it out of there. Okay, so that's pass number three. That's much, 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 much better. Okay, so let's see what four yields, and then we'll move on to that packing valve. <clears throat> really not getting a lot out of the residual tip down here, uh, out of this end, other than some faded paint that's coming out of there, but that'll clean up nice at the end. You do have to be careful with Q-tips in here. If you wind them too hard one way, you'll pull the hair right off of them and leave a bunch of it in there, and then you just have a, a huge extrication problem that's not worth your time or effort. So that's side four. I may give that one more rub, but I kind of doubt it, actually. Because that's pretty damn good. Now, the piece that I am missing. There we go. Okay, I wanted to go back to this insertable collar sleeve for the air valve. This is important. Get all this shit out of here, guys. Okay, there's not a ton in there, but you can see there's enough of a dark ring in there that seats right up against the end of that valve to draw my concern. There's also enough on the outside. If you guys get really brave, you can get some flits. I wouldn't want to do it myself because flits does change uh, metal dimensionally, even in the thinnest, minuscule amounts. And this, you guys saw what a tight press fit this was. I don't want to alter this in any way, and I also don't want a lot of shit under that seal. But you could pull all this apart, and you could honestly polish it with flits. You could also polish your needle with flits and make it smooth and your trigger and at some point I'm I may do that but not now <clears throat> so I need to borrow this little guy so I can get in that crevasse all right and there's my air valve all done okay tip again my 0.5 tip I only ever go in because as you can see this is a good bit shorter than the actual tip. So it all, I probably am only getting to right there, but then if I need to go any farther, I'll use the plastic guy here and I can actually show you a little piece of the green. I'm not sure if you can see it in front or behind my finger right there. I think you can see it on the back of my glove, but anyway. That's how I clean my tip. I never clean it from the front. I always clean it from this end. I've checked this with the uh, microscope and the magnifier, and it's good. It looks good. There's some wear in there, and it is going to be time to be looking for uh, um, probably a replacement needle in about another year. But so far, this one I believe I've replaced about a year ago. Oh boy, yeah, look at all the schmutz on here. Let me get us a nice white piece of paper towel so you guys can see the amount of shit coming out of here. <clears throat> okay, there's all kinds. There's the first goo. There's a bunch more in here. More, more. There's a whole bunch here on the outside. out again and get some of this crap out of here. 
As you guys can see, I put my glove on the wrong hand. I should have put it on my left hand here, but I didn't. So, just going to have to deal with that. I wish I could go further magnification for you guys, but I can't. I'm at, I'm at four right now, so you'll just have to live with me. I think this is this is doing okay. And I think, hopefully, if I can get a good view of it, I will be able to show you guys what I was able to get out of here. And you'll actually see that nice white Teflon PTFE washer here in the front. PTFE is poly Teflon something something. I, I forgot. Chemical resistant is what they're trying to tell you. It's chemical resistant. Okay. So now, hey, look at that. Look at that. I got a actual white and brass. Still a little bit of scrub on this end. I actually need a stripper brush, but just don't have one right now. So I'm gonna make the best of it. <clears throat> okay. So for those of you who have never had a tour of and I bought an airbrush on the inside. There you go. Um, I'm going to put it all back together. As a matter of fact, I may stop this right now and uh, reposition the cameras again and um, video putting it all back together for you guys. So uh, thanks for hanging out. Be back soon. Hi guys, we're back. I told you I'd be back. We're going to reassemble this pig. So here we go. Let me go ahead and zoom in again. See what have I done? Oh my gosh, what have I done? Hmm. Okay. I do want to work down in this section. Sorry, I'm kind of having to watch the screen while I do this. But basically, what I want to do is get this guy back into here. I'll show you two different ways to do it. One I like, one that I don't. The one that I like involves using this little jeweler's screwdriver. The one that I don't involves using a technique that Iwata says if you basically just put it on the blunt end of your needle, the back end of your needle, with your slotted screwdriver facing onto it, you can use it to basically just drop it into the channel. And that works. But now <clears throat> What you have to do, I always try to drop mine in at a 45 degree angle or near horizontal. That way I know where I can pick it up. But once I get a hold of it, I'll be quiet and you can hear it, but turn it backwards until we find that break for the thread and you know you'll be there. And there it is. That was the clunk. I'll do it again to demonstrate. We'll go all the way around. There it is. So, now that I'm in there, it's basically just a matter of snug. That's it. Snug. If I'm not mistaken on my brush, it is about seven and a half turns. Something like that. Okay. But I mean, literally, it doesn't need to be any tighter than that, guys. So, the backing valve is back in. <clears throat> so with that, I'm going to show you another small trick that I've learned. And unfortunately, I have to zoom back out to do this. Silicone, gun and reel. Silicone impregnated cloth. Okay. I burnish this on all my outside surfaces. This is a molecular bonding type of oil. It is not a lubricant type oil. It bonds with the metals. I put it on threaded portions. I'm going to put it on the shaft. 
of the air valve right there. I'm putting it on the outside sleeve of the air valve. Taking care not to smear a bunch on the seal on here. Okay, but just give it a little coat. Not a big deal. I'm not going to worry about these pieces over here because I've already done them. Alright. Okay. So, I know you guys can't see what's in the body there. Okay, but you might be able to get... Oh, look at that. You can. Can you see the little slotted cusp down there? I know it's not really particularly in focus, but you can see it sitting in there. That is the replaced needle packing valve. So now we're going to do the exact same thing. i got to get my magnifiers on. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> so we're going to do the exact same thing with the sleeve. <clears throat> the two holes here are not particularly important. However, I do drop them perpendicular. In other words, I drop them crossways this way because right up here is the pickup air device for your trigger control. So all I do, again, is just give that a good wipe, drop that in there, and you'll see it is a press type fit. Can you see it being a little bit springy right there? That's because of that gasket that's in there. So just go ahead and give that a good, a good in. And then usually what I'll do is take the blunt end of my needle here and I'll just give it a tamp to make sure that it is seated. And even after it feels seated, you can only get your finger in there so far of the way. I don't know if you guys were able to gauge how much farther I dropped that, but probably almost another four millimeters or something along those lines. So here we go. Remember, plunger in, in first. Rectamundo, followed by the spring, also Correctamundo, and here's where it gets a little dicey because now I have to pick up, remember this little guy, the little odd shaped guy? So essentially what I kind of have to do, and I apologize if my fingers are going to get in the way here, sometimes I can get this, sometimes I can't. Snug. Okay, so you guys can see that air valve is also back in there right now. And we can give it a little test and you'll see how smooth and glassy it is. Okay, drop the trigger, plunger back in. Okay, glass like glass. This is going to spray very, very nicely. So anyway, here's the trigger actuation control. goes in the channel, sets against the back side of the trigger. There's a cutout here um, on the back of the trigger. This always indicates back. Right. Spring goes on to the chucking needle housing. The rest of the chucking needle housing screws into the body. Now, for here, there are some people who will set this. They'll screw it all the way tight without this air valve depressed. I do not. I depress my air valve and mainly I do that so that I can see this plunge right down here on the bottom. Can you see that moving? Hopefully. Okay, so I just give mine a little squeeze and I finish threading it in. Okay, I don't go overly tight. As a matter of fact, once I do get tight, I back it off that extra hair. So what ends up happening with my trigger is that there's pretty much two settings on here. One is completely closed, which is here, okay, and it's a little sticky off the get-go. Or, if I back it off that extra little hair, okay, my trigger becomes smoother, but my needle action becomes a little bit delayed. You'll see as I continue putting it together here. Personally, I like mine smoother and delayed. 
So that's exactly how I'm going to set it. And I'll make a final adjustment here <clears throat> as soon as we get to that point. So the needle's all clean. The needle goes in from the front. My needle always goes in from the front. It also comes out from the front. So I got my little chucking nut on right here, and I'll just give that a, a tight down. All right, so now I've got all that extra needle showing right there. So basically what I'll do here is just drop my tip on and just let it sit. Okay, it's just sitting there. And I'll give it a good rotate. And this actually gives me an opportunity to check the tip to see maybe something that I might have missed on the uh, magnifiers. Because they don't show everything. And quite honestly, those magnifiers are not great with light. So as you guys can see, I just basically slid my tip all the way in. Okay, so my needle distance is preset right there based on how much of my tip is left, not on how much of my needle is left. So by tuning the sweet spot, once I get it set in there, I just give it a little bit of finger pressure right here, and I give it a very gentle rotate, and I watch the tip. I know you guys probably cannot see that, but I am rotating that tip. Maybe you can catch a glimpse of the glare. So once that is set, I'll tighten it down. I'll give it a trigger check, and as you can see, that needle all but disappears right to the edge of that tip. Okay, as I actuate. So once I get that set, I'll set my outer nozzle, my inner crown protector, my handle, and my quick connect. Yeah. Okay, there you have it. Everything but a complete strip of the Iwata BCS. Siphon feed, dual action, airbrush. I'm Scott, it's S3 Model Works. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll get this edited up and put it out there for you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll still feel like filming stuff later. And I am rather excited to show you guys my progress on the T34. I have yet to put it in primer, but that should be coming tonight. So be patient with me. Again, I'm Scott, S3 Model Works. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you guys. And uh, come back and join me later. Okay, take care. Bye.